He is proof that Goonies never die. He's in the zone out making a statement on that Loserville tour this summer. My man, Corey Feldman. What is up, my brother? Hello, hello. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm, I'm pretty proud of you to see where you are today. And, and then well, li- thanks, bro. listening to, to your memoir, your Audible book uh, here, and seeing that you've had so many highs in your life and so many very lows. And now you're out on tour with Fred Durst and, and kicking ass, man. Is, is all these highs and lows kind of help you to write a lot of these songs and perform like you do? It sure does, man. It gives me plenty of material to talk about, that's for sure. And have you, are you, you've familiarized yourself with Woodstock 99 now that you're about ready to go out on a summer tour with Fred Durst? <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm I'm aware of went down back in you know Woodstock '99, but I think we've evolved as a society. I don't think we're all going to be breaking chairs over each other's heads and burning them on fire in uh, the year 2024. At least, let's hope not. 25 years later, I don't know. That was a pretty kick-ass show. I know it didn't end it didn't end well, but man, what a crowd! And uh, the fact that you're going to be out on tour with uh, Fred Durst, and he just directed your new music video, which. Congrats, by the way. That thing kicks ass. I highly suggest you go out and check out the joke, uh, the new single, and the new video that's uh, that's out on YouTube. How'd you get connected with Fred? How'd that work out? Thank you. Well, actually, Fred and I have been friends for quite a long time. We uh, we met back in like 2010 or 2011, something like that, uh, at the Playboy Mansion. And uh, actually, you know what? It may have been even further back than that. Now that I think about it, it might have been back in the '90s. But I know we 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 definitely met at the Playboy Mansion. Talked for I think about ten years about doing something together, and it never happened. <clears throat> and then eventually, one day, I don't know how it finally happened, but we kind of it, it was almost like challenging each other. Like you know, you really want to work together? Are we really going to make a song together? All right, fine. Then then prove it. You know that sort of thing. Uh, but we we did eventually get together and made some magic and we made a song called seamless which actually appeared on my 2016 album angelic to the core great song which features scott page from pink floyd and uh you know we did that we released it and then around that time we did a couple other appearances together i i showed up and and did a concert with limp biscuit actually at the house of blues in los angeles uh where i performed billy jean uh with him which was a lot of fun and then we did george michael's faith together uh, so that was a good night. And then we uh, we did some charity events together. He came on my Corey's Angels Talk Live show. So we've had a lot of interaction through the years. And then most recently, you know, uh, I was on tour supporting my brand new box set, which had come out in 2022 called Love Left 2.1, which featured my brand new album, Love Left 2. And while I was out on the road promoting that, one of the big shows we did uh, was actually Riot Fest last year, where we had like 20,000 people. And I think he saw that, and I think that inspired him to contact me and ask if we could get together and do this together. Whatever it was, you know, the magic happened. He called and he said, do you want to do this tour with me next year? And I was like, yeah, man, of course, let's do it. And then as a result of that, we did this 17-minute short film the low serve ill behind the scenes uh, press junket, I guess you would call it, uh, which is actually really funny directed by Fred. And while we were on the set working on that, you know, I thought, Hey, I've got a new single coming out. Maybe it would be a lot of fun if you directed my video, considering we're going to be on tour together. Uh, And he, uh, he said, sure, let's do it. There you go. Yeah. That low serveville tour is coming to a city near you this summer. And if you want to get your VIP meet and greet passes, just head to CoreyFeldman.net, and you can get pictures signed from him, get a Funko Pop. Those things have been flying off the shelves. Uh, that's got to be a that's hot right, high yeah. for you, having the Funko Pops being like a hot item out there. I got to tell you, what an honor. It really is. You know, I've always wanted my own line of toys. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Talk about another high in your life. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your first gig performing in front of a crowd was 60000 at the Rose Bowl and you're on stage with Michael Jackson. Is that true? Your very first ever performance, you happened to get well, 60,000? Almost true. Uh, yes, I was in front of 60,000. It was singing, or actually lip syncing, as it were, Michael Jackson. So almost almost the right story, but a little bit uh, skewed. Uh, so Michael was my influence at the time, and I was friends with him already, I believe. But I, uh, I, I didn't know how to sing yet. So what happened was I'd done some big charity show where they had a bunch of different celebrities coming out and performing. Most of them were just doing kind of dance numbers or maybe singing a cappella. Like it was that sort of a thing we did in the 80s. You know, performers would show up with a cassette tape 
and you'd put your tape in and then they would play it over the loudspeakers and you'd do your bit. So mine was Billy Jean. I, I was, you know, getting quite proficient at doing the Billy Jean dance around that time. So I did Billy Jean, I did it for the audience, the crowd went wild. And it was during that moment that I realized, hey, there might be something to this. You know, maybe I should think about writing my own music and doing my own songs since people seem to like me on stage. And I think that's what inspired it all. A lot of people know you for your acting, but uh, from what I've heard in your memoir, that's a choreography that you can check out that came out about 11 years ago. You talk about that your first auditions, you would wow the casting director with the fact that you could sing. When I, when I mentioned songs like Put On A Happy Face and raindrops keep falling on my head when was the last time that you sang those tunes so they bring up good memories or bad memories for you well you, you certainly did your research so kudos on that uh yes those were the songs that i sang as a child and and uh well they're weird memories let's just put it that way you know the last time i was locked in a room and made to learn a song those would be the songs but uh you know, obviously these days I, I learn my music in different ways. <laughs> Definitely not locking myself in my bedroom for hours. But you know, hey, it all works. No junk food junkie any, anymore. We can't. We aren't going to hear no, that one on stage. No, but you know what? Maybe, maybe that would be a fun one to call back after all these years. You're inspiring me with new thoughts. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See, be glad you came on this podcast, my man. We, we're we're, we're worldwide, right. baby. We're here there with my man go. Corey Feldman. If you want to get those VIP passes for the uh, concert this summer. He's coming to a city near you. That's Corey Feldman, uh, dot net. What is the process for you when you're writing these songs? Because you've worked with some of the greats. I mean, you've seen Steven Spielberg work, working. You've seen Donner directing. What have you drawn from all of these people that you've worked with throughout your career that now is making you a, a performer that's traveling the world, you know, touring worldwide? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Uh, when it comes to making films, I learned a lot from Richard Donner. I learned a lot from Steven Spielberg. But when it comes to making music... I would like to think that, that, you know, my knowledge comes from sitting in the studio with Michael Jackson and having the opportunity to watch him work, uh, which was a great privilege, uh, or getting to, to share the stage with some of the great legendary rock icons that I have. Uh, you know, I got to play uh, The Who's My Generation with John Entwistle on stage. I got to play uh, Money and uh, Another Brick in the Wall uh, with with the great Nick Mason playing drums on stage and Scott Page and John Karen from Pink Floyd, so I've had I've had such a great opportunity to work with some really heavy hitters. I mean, I even got called on stage during Ringo's performance at the Greek Theater and 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 got to to dance on stage with James Brown. So I mean, I've really really had some uh, tremendous experiences uh, with both music and film. You know, I've I've gotten to work with so many great great people. So what I've learned is is really a little tiny pearl of wisdom from each of them. You know, I, I mean, I even had some great conversations with B.B. King, and he's the one who inspired me to quit smoking. So, you know, all across the board, I've been I've been inspired by the greats. Well, one of your opening lines in your song is everybody's talking shit, calling you an idiot. When you sit here and tell me that you've learned your dance moves from Michael Jackson, you've played with a fucking beetle. For God's sakes, why are you writing lyrics? Everybody's talking shit, calling you an idiot. Why do you think that these bots and trolls and haters out there uh, think that you know that they want to hate on you? But at the end of the day, you're winning, right? I mean, it seems to me like right. you are. Well, you know what? Listen, people get very jealous. Unfortunately, it's a, it's we call it jelly rolls, <laughs> but uh, but that's the deal. You know, these people like to to assume these positions of like, hey, we want to bring this guy down. You know, for whatever reason. They want to try and prove somehow that I'm not credible or it's not real. And that's what the song The Joke is all about. You know, the new single, it's it's all about the fact that there are these critics out there or, or trolls. And a lot of them are bots. I mean, so really, it's not even real people writing these comments. It's somebody hiring these bot farms to go in there and write these terrible comments on YouTube and on my, my you know Twitter page or Instagram page or whatever it is. And it's terrible, you know, and, and you see it with every artist. And it's such a shame that we can't just appreciate art for what it is and appreciate an artist for what they are, that we want to sit there and criticize them and think that we can do better. Uh, but, you know, I, I've got news for you. There's no way I can do better than the people that I listen to, the people that I admire. And, you know, hopefully somewhere along the line, uh, there's people out there that appreciate what I do. Well, you were in so many beautiful pieces of art back in the day that we remember from our childhood. If you don't mind, I, I'm just going to mention one of the movies that you were in, and then you kind of tell me the, the scene or the day of shooting that comes to your mind quickly. But 
We'll start in 1984. Hard to believe 40 years ago this summer, Gremlins had come out, and uh, you were in the movie. And Howie Mandel, I, I found out recently, I didn't realize he was the voice of Gizmo, but the special effects and the crew that went into making him come to life, what was that experience like shooting on that set of Gremlins? I barely remember, dude. I was 11 years old, man. You know, that was only like 40 years ago, so you're going way back. Yeah, well, way back. I mean, I, I, I remember Gizmo, and uh, that was 40 years ago, so, uh, but uh, you, you, you don't recall. Sure, yeah. you, don't, you don't recall? I mean, I, I, how, how do you forget that? Animated little uh, fella. Well, you're talking about feelings that somebody has 40 years ago. Do you remember what you were doing when you were 10 years old? Yeah, I was playing wiffle ball, playing Nintendo, uh, building forts, you know, looking at dirty magazines. So what was, there you go. What was the feeling you got when you looked at your first dirty magazine? First I was like, oh, my God, I am not gay, and I, I, I completely love that. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, I love pussy, and pussy loves me. That's what I thought right <laughs> when I seen it. <laughs> There you go. Wonderful, wonderful. What about Stand By Me? Rob Reiner, Stephen King, uh, that movie a few years later, you're a little older. Anything come to mind when I mentioned Stand By Me? I mean, yeah, sure. You know, it was a great summer getting to know those guys. You know, that was a lot of fun. I can tell you don't like going down memory lane with these old films. Is it, is it a bad, uh, bad time for you? It's not really my thing. I like talking about the current stuff, you know. I mean, you can only talk about the same movies 5,000 times in your lifetime before it gets boring. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you get you get tired of talking about history. It's it's better to talk about your moment in time, where you are moving forward, what your goals are, you know, things like that. That's you, that's what inspires me. You really have put all this in your rear view mirror. You, you, you've you spilled all the blood, and now it's nothing but rainbows and sunshine and love, I feel, which, which I'm proud of you for that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, I like to keep things positive. I believe that uh, we have to believe in our future. We have to keep looking forward. We can't just sit there and focus on our past. And, you know, nobody really wants to hear a guy talk about their past. Well, I was so great back in 1973. You know, it's like, okay, cool, man. Well, you did that, and then we move on, right? But, so but I will let you know, you know, there's generations like my kids and my kids' kids. I mean, you've put together pieces of art that will live forever. So I, I don't think, in my opinion... Thank you should turn your back on that stuff. I mean, you, you put in a lot of work and you, you sacrificed a lot in your life for these films and uh, they bring a lot of joy to people uh, these days. So I understand you don't want to talk about it, but I just want to tell you as a fan, I, I want to uh, want to tell you that the, these films mean a lot to uh, to people in their childhood. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of so many great memories. Uh, but at the same time, I've done over 100 films. So, you know, going back to a specific moment in time is very difficult for somebody who's done so much, you know what I mean, through so many years. You meet so many people, you have so many experiences. So, you know, I, I, I think that the memory is almost full sort of thing. Like you can only go back so long uh, in your memory banks. Uh, not to say that I don't remember the moments, but I don't think I would have the same fresh vividness that you would be looking for. Fair enough. Well, let's look uh, ahead, which I saw on your Instagram that you were hanging with the great Billy Corrigan and you're sma uh, yep. smashing some vibes with smashing pumpkins. What is on the horizon with you and Billy? Well, I don't want to give that away. I think that's uh, in Billy's corner to uh, to unveil when he's ready to unveil what that secret is. But I can tell you that we did something fun together. So people will be seeing it soon all right man well keep telling your truth and and keep working on those calluses on your finger if you're going to keep on rocking i play guitar myself you got to have you, strong brother. calluses how how are those fingers uh, right. have you been playing a lot of guitar they're, they're, yeah you know i'm playing more than usual on this tour uh specifically because you know with my other shows as i, I mentioned they're much longer usually so we usually we have like two hour shows uh this is going to be a much smaller show because i'm only the opener so obviously it's not quite as much intensive work, but that said, I am playing more during the show. Uh, I'm playing on two or three songs during our set. And, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not going to break my fingers or anything, but that said, it's much heavier stuff. Uh, I will tell you that we've prepared a special set for this tour and it's going to be a pretty fairly heavy set. So uh, I think we're going to grab people by the cojones and uh, we're not going to let go until we walk off the stage. Well, make sure you get those VIP passes and you go see my man, Corey Feldman and Limp Biscuit on this. What is it? It's not the Loserville tour. You guys are calling it something it's else? It's called the Low Serve Ill tour. The Low Serve Ill tour. Get ill this summer with my That's man, right. Corey That's Feldman. Right. Follow him on Instagram. And uh, thanks for your time, my man. 
and good luck. I, I look forward to checking out a show this summer. Thank you, brother. I hope to meet you out there. All right. Sounds good. Peace out. Thank you. God bless.